Okay, let's face it, not all your tenants are the same. They might have unique needs and specific implementations. One might be using Azure Storage, while another prefer Google Drives. Wouldn't be awesome if you can support custom service registration depending on the tenant specification? In this video, I will show you how to do just that. Register and resolve custom services depending on the tenant configuration, so you can support multiple storage providers without any issues. So let's get started. This is an empty web API project. And first, I'm going to support multi-tenant. Let's create a new interface, which is iTenant. So our tenant will have an ID, int ID, it will have a name, and it will have a storage type. And let's create this enum, so public enum storage type. And for my enum, I will have undefined first. I always have undefined in my enums. Azure storage, we can have Google Drive, and maybe file system. Okay, so this is a custom configuration for this tenant. Let's also create a class, so public class tenant, that implement iTenant, the name required. So this is a configuration needed for a tenant. It's a simple one. You can add whatever configuration that you need later on, but it's for now, it's enough. Let's now create a new interface called iTenancy Manager. So the tenancy manager interface, the tenancy manager will resolve our tenant depending on the name or the code, and it will return a new tenant. For now, it will be a static configuration, but think about it in the future, you can call an API to register, or maybe you have a JSON file that you can resolve all the tenants from it. So the interface will have get tenant async, and let's create an implementation for it, tenancy manager. And here, I'm going to add task.yield just to make this method async, and then we can return tenant name switch. So if it is client1, return new tenant with a storage type file system. Let's do two more. And if we don't find any tenant, it will be a null. Let's make this return a nullable tenant. So this is our tenancy manager. We can now go to our program.cs and register that tenancy manager. So for that, I'm going to register it as singleton. Now, after registering our tenancy manager, we can now start using the tenancy manager to resolve our tenants. For that, I'm going to create a middleware. So create a new class, tenancy middleware. Hey, just one thing, like, subscribe, consider joining my mailing list. It's in the description below. This is the default implementation of a middleware, and we are going to start injecting first our iTenancy Manager. Tenancy Manager, so we can now use the Tenancy Manager in our code. So for this demo, it will be a simple one. I'm going to try to resolve a tenant when it's added to the header. So I can do var tenant equal context dot request dot headers. And since headers is a dictionary, I can specify X tenant. And we need a first or default. First check if the tenant is null. If so, we can return a forbidden response. So context dot response dot status code equal status code dot status 403 forbidden. And let's write a message await context dot response dot write async tenant is required. Return. So first we check if the tenant exists in the header. Then we need to resolve that tenant using the tenancy manager. So I tenant current tenant equal tenancy manager dot get tenant async, the tenant name, which is tenant in that case. So if current tenant is null, let's say the user added unregistered tenant, it will be the same as we did before, tenant is not registered. We have now the current tenant. We can simply store it in the context items. So context.items current tenant equal to current tenant. So this is our middleware. Let's go to program.cs and register that middleware. Simply do app.use middleware and specify the name, which is tenancy middleware. And now our app do support multi-tenant. Let's start now by creating our storage service. 
So go ahead and create a new interface, I storage service, Some interface, simply return a string for get file content async and specify the file name. This is our only method for now, okay? I can have multiple implementation. So let's say I can have a class for Azure storage service that will return task dot from result, something like this. And let's do a similar one for Google Drive and another one from file system, okay? So every class here, every implementation can have its own things calling Azure Storage SDK or maybe Google Drive or anything. But for now, let's return only the string here, just specifying what type of the implementation was used. Let's go to program.cs and register these services. So first we need to register all the implementation. So by that, let's add Azure Storage Service, another one for file system and another for Google Drive. Okay, so now our services are registered make sure to register our service, which is I storage service. But here we are going to have a custom implementation for that registration provider. Remember in our middleware, we stored the current tenant inside the context. So we need a way to actually get that context inside our registration here. So for that, make sure to register add HTTP context accessor inside your DI. And now we can use var context equal the provider dot get required service. The service is I HTTP context accessor dot HTTP context. So now we can have the HTTP context var tenant equal context dot items current tenant. Make sure you have these keys as a constant somewhere in your code, but for this demo, it's fine. Do a condition here if tenant here as I tenant. So resolve it as a tenant. And if tenant is null, throw some exception. Okay, so we have now the tenant, the current tenant. We can do a switch case. So return tenant dot storage type switch the first one. If it is storage type dot Azure, we can do provider dot get required service of type Azure storage service. If it is file system and the last one, which is Google Drive. Although you can do like, you can do new Azure storage, but don't do that because in this way here, if you inject anything to this service, like a logger, maybe some custom configuration for that implementation, you can use it without dealing with that dependency, like use the right dependency injection approach here. And if it is anything else, we need to throw new not supported exception. Now we have a storage service registered, resolved by the tenant storage type. Let's try now to implement that in our endpoint here. Let's inject I storage service, service, and simply return it doing service dot get file content, whatever, like file name dot txt, let's say. Now let's run our code. The app is running. This is a port. I'm going to use postman. Let's create a request, send. Notice here we have 403 forbidden, tenant is required because we didn't specify the tenant here. So if we specify X tenant, ABC, wrong tenant, tenant is not registered. But if we specify client one, send, client one is returning content from the file system. Let's do client two. Client two is registered for Azure storage. And same thing for client three, we are returning Google Drive, which is perfect. Because if you remembered in our implementation, in our tenancy manager, we created every tenant to have a custom storage type. And this is how you can resolve and register services depending on the tenant configuration. If you want to learn about multi-tenant background services, check my video here.